We have a special lesson today. We're looking at the many facets and facts that are embedded inside the golden rectangle. You're going to be so amazed. And the reason why I'm showing you this is that this is an example of where lots of harmonic numbers appear. I like to index and organize all this knowledge into what we call a, a, a harmonic stairway. It's Jane's Dictionary of Numbers. It's my lifetime collection of organizing all this knowledge so that at any time you want to know about what's 116 about what's 1.9 about so i'm calling this the golden rectangle and in a nutshell what we're doing today is we're only looking at the main diagonals of the golden rectangle and you'll be amazed i mean really amazed what's encoded in this so just firstly um we just did an e-course um, on, on the beach studying the golden rectangle and how to draw the golden spiral. So we did that. So this is the follow-up. And, and to do that, we need to get grids happening. So to get the grids happening, you can see that what I'm showing you here is pretty correct. Excuse the thickness of the chalk, but this is, this is a good size. It's a perfect golden rectangle. Now, to, just to double check it, Leonardo da Vinci, as you know, he would have had this um, calipers, the golden calipers. So once we know this leg here, we, we pick it up and we can check, we can check that it fits exactly, that this fits, this gives us the length. So the short to the long, because it has three legs. If that's one, this is 1.618. So we know that this is all working. And so we're gonna call this one, that's the width, and the longest side is called phi. So we know that this is 1.618. And we put three dots because it means it goes forever without any recursion. I'm not gonna draw the squares, I just wanna show you that we're gonna look at this and we're gonna look at that. And so what's the first thing is we wanna measure that diagonal here. So what I need to do is I've, I've drawn a triangle here and you call it one over phi. So by knowing Pythagoras' theorem, one squared plus phi squared equals x squared. That's looking at the square. That's adding up all the squares around this, only because it's a 90 degree triangle. When you look, when you finish Pythagoras' theorem, you get x equals 1.9. So 1.902 happens to be the diagonal using Pythagoras' theorem, but we could use modern trigonometry and say, I know this angle here, I can say that the tangent of this angle is one over phi. So one over phi is 0.618. So the tan of 0.618 gives us 31.7 degrees. Now the reason why 31.7 degrees, that's called the arc tan. When you don't know the angle, but you know the sides, we've got the arc tan is 31.7 degrees. And the reason why that's significant is that if you have a cube and you tilt it one, two, three, four, five, according to this angle, which is close to 32 degrees, it gives us, there's the yellow cube. If you tilt the cube one, two, three, four, five, and it, you end up getting the dodecahedron, which is on the outside here. So this is what we call a critical angle. Um, I'm gonna tick that, so that's the base angle. I'll tick that one. The base angle is 31.7, forming the dodecahedron, which is golden ratio. Now, just before, um, what the other thing about Brune's constant, um, the other thing about this number here, this diagonal is 1.9, is that it's also the sum, it's called Brune's constant here. Brune's constant is important in physics because he took all the um, twin primes. So when you look at all the prime numbers, like 1, um, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, uh, um, twin primes are separated by a division by six. So between five and 76, between 11 and 13 is 12. They're all divisible by six, right? So the, the twin primes, he took the reciprocal of them. So, so Brune took, he said, I'm gonna add up all the numbers in the universe in pairs of one on five plus one on seven, they're fractions. And then the next twin primes are one on 11 and one on 13. And he keeps adding them, one on, one on 17 plus one on 19. He keeps adding it forever. It's called the limit. So when you take the limit 
of all these reciprocals of twin primes, you get 1.9. So it's interesting that the main diagonal of the golden rectangle is also a famous, famous constant. A constant is something that is forever. And also 1.9, That a third fact about 1.9 is that it's the, the distance of the pyramid. So when we look at the Egypt pyramid, if, if the distance from here to there is 1, that's called the opossum, the slope height going up here is 1.618, that's phi, but we want the edge length. So this edge length of the Giza pyramid is also 1.9. And you're going to realise that the more we do this, more and more knowledge is completely embedded in here. And then, so, so what's half of 1.9 is that if we did a circumcircle, if we... If we did a circle that completely goes around this, we need to have a radius of half that distance. So that's called 0.951. So 0.951 is half of the diagonal. That's important. And then, so we've done the circumradius. What about the perimeter? If I start from here, if that's phi plus that plus that plus that, if you add it all up, it's 5.236. Now, why is 5.236 important? Is because in harmonics, we're allowed to um, slide the decimal. I'm going to move it to there. So if we had 0.523, that's the Egyptian cubit. That's like one-sixth of pi. So this is very, very important harmonic, 0.523. And so it also comes up in another situation if I was to slide the decimal, so here's the perimeter, phi, 2, five plus 2. It is 5.236, but if I was to slide the decimal to there and get 52.3, where does that number appear? And it happens to appear in the volume of a sphere. If, we, if this is, say, 100%, if the volume of the cube is 10 by 10, or no, we'll just call it 100 for now. If I measured the volume of the sphere that's inside, that so we've got to realize that this ball is actually a little bit bigger and it's touching it's touching the top and bottom and the sides. The volume of the sphere inside the unit cube happens to be 52.3%. And I thought, wow, that's an amazing occurrence. So that's the that's the volume of the sphere here. And just the last thing to look at, we want to look at the angles in between the diagonals here. So I want to look at that angle, which is the same as that angle. And again, I can calculate it by doing, um, if I was to just, if I was just to do this and have a right angle here, I can calculate this angle here and I can calculate that angle there. And it's called the arc tan. So when we work with arc tan, that's when we, um, don't, we don't know this angle, but we know the edges. So by doing a thing called arc tan, which is tan to the minus one, I'm able to calculate that this angle, that this angle here is, this angle here is 58.2, but I need to double it. So by doubling 58.2, I get 116.5. So I didn't want to go through all the trigonometry, I just wanted to give you these values. And so where does this number... Um, 116 appear. It appears in the um, what we call when the planet Mercury goes around the sun. If there's a fixed star and we measure how long does it take, Mercury takes 88 days to go from a fixed point in the constellation, it takes 88 days to go around the sun. We know that, right? That's called sidereal. But the there's another value called 116.5 days, it's called the synod, which means if this is the sun and we have Earth going around. So as Earth is moving and Mercury is moving, that's called the synodic period. So it's called 116.5. And I could go on and on about this, but I just wanted to show you there's actually more information. And what's important is that all of this is in the palm of your hand. This, The summary, the conclusion of the this golden rectangle is that we have a golden rectangle, golden rectangle here. So essentially... All this cosmic knowledge, these codes of creation, are literally embedded in the cellular memory of our anatomy. So just always remember that.